Hello, welcome to the Battleground Project, an experiment in Christian localism. I'm C.R. Wiley. And I'm Max Booth. On this podcast, we hope to discuss local issues from a Christian perspective. And while these issues are specific to our little town of Battleground, we hope that you'll find them helpful wherever you are. Hello, welcome to the Battleground Project. Hey, Max, great to see you. Good afternoon, Chris. How are you today? All right, we're back here at Old Town Burger. The sounds you hear in the background are the delightful sounds of a diner that's busy. And you're going to hear us in a moment receiving our food because we've already ordered. But we are joined today by a friend of mine and a friend of Max. And uh, we've got Camden Spiller. Thank you. Yeah, Camden. It's good to be here. Well, it's good to have you. Why don't you introduce yourself yeah, to the you folks bet. out there in the listening audience? You bet. No, I'm glad to be here. Um, here in Battleground, Washington, I think maybe what a little bit we'll talk about today is maybe entrepreneurism. We're, we're talking about um, the, the business that we have here in Battleground. is a company called Maddox Industrial Transformer. And it's a company that I founded about eight years ago. And um, we've got a history that kind of spreads across the U.S. We, we were headquartered in um, in South Carolina, and I can kind of kind of share some about that. But uh, I'm really excited about kind of the premise of this show. This this Christian localism thing has been something that's been been of interest to me. It's been on my heart as I've um, uh, planned out various business initiatives over the years. And uh, so, yeah, I'm super interested in this project and glad to be a small part of it to be here today. Yeah, well, that means you're kind of local in more than one place. You're local in Battleground, <laughs> yeah. you're local in Greenville, South Carolina, <laughs> yeah. you're also local in Batavia, Ohio. Yeah, Moscow, and, Idaho. And Moscow, uh, Idaho. Houston area, and, yeah. and Houston. So yeah. you're, you're local. You're, you're local in five places at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's kind of an interesting, um, that's been a development, of course. Um, and uh, But the engagement, the local community engagement is is really, really huge for us. Um, this is a company that we we started with the premise of um, a building with good people. Um, that was in a similar industry and, and um, had an opportunity to transition to uh, to start up my own firm here, and uh, one of the things I really wanted to do differently was build it with good people. Um, and there's um, there's kind of been a, a guiding principle for me to want to invest in people who are building strong families, churches, and communities. And so that's you know that 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 is uh, you know when I think of how you know what is localism, what is Christian localism, it's it's uh, it's really kind of the confluence of those things: the families, churches, you know, it, it's the the whole the whole package. And and we need good businesses to be able to do that. Businesses, um, you know, they they may be those that are community facing. Maybe it's a you know it's a local restaurant like we're sitting in now. That's an easy way to see a direct way to serve the community. But then there's also um, there's also providing economic opportunity, right? Providing jobs for people, providing um, career development, leadership development, all those things that um, that we need um, to yeah to develop the economies of our community. So anyway, some yeah, of my thoughts there. Well, that's great stuff. And so the 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 fact that you're headquartered in um, South Carolina doesn't mean you live there. You, you actually live here in this area. We do, yes. Yeah. And uh, so tell us a little bit about Maddox here in Battleground. Right. So here in Battleground, so our, our business, um, just at a, at a high level, we provide uh, industrial transformers. So these are the big kind of substation transformers that you see. Um, behind fences, you know, with gravel and, and barbed wire, that, that the, kind the of stuff. One, yeah, the ones that if you were to, like, touch, you'd die. Right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or, you know, the ones you hear on the news occasionally of, you know, somebody shoots one up and a city goes to black. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's the, right. It, that's right. what we're working with. Right, so you're so. part of, like, the uh, industrial sort of uh, infrastructure. Correct, that yes. That makes, it makes uh, this restaurant possible and, sure. you know, municipalities function and all that kind of stuff. So, pretty, yeah. pretty. Now, another thing that's, Worth noting is you guys are growing really fast. Right, right, right. It's uh, it's been fun to um, to to be a part of that growth the last few years. We um, we've been featured in Inc. Magazine for the last four years in a row, um, fastest growing companies in the U.S. Um, they do a, a survey of all 
privately held companies, and it's been fun to be be featured to that. But but you're right; it's a, it's a critical infrastructure kind of kind of business, and that's one of the things that really uh, um, really appealed to me. Uh, you know, there's uh, the proverb about you know man plans his ways, but the Lord directs the steps. That's always gonna gonna be true. So I did right. I did not look down the corridors of time and <laughs> and, uh, and realize and the, I was gonna be in the transformer and, business. That's right. In the providence of Camden, <laughs> he chose. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yes. Uh, that was uh, not exactly how it happened. But but. Uh, how big is the local? Yes, yeah, the branch local. Here? We've got about fifty people here, um, yeah. so we got. Um, we're a relatively low um, low headcount, um, but we um, we got a, a couple hundred people across the country, um, and we've really structured the business in a way where we can have relatively high paying jobs. Um, mm-hmm. We have fewer people and pay them, you know, pay them better. That's, that's, right, uh, right. um, there's like some that. entry level roles, but we try and, you know, train people up. And, yeah. Well, that's, that's a great formula. Um, obviously that's a, that's beneficial to a local community to have, you know, well-paid people, uh, working for a company that they like being a part of. And I happen to know a number of people who are part of your company and they like being part of it. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you. So I guess another kind of interesting dynamic to this, and you and I have talked a little bit about this yeah. is uh, the fact that America is in a process of transition. There's a kind of reshoring that's yes. happening across the board. This is something that doesn't get uh, a lot of press. Uh, I suspect because people will give Trump credit for it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the yeah. current current administration is actually carrying forward. They didn't change the plan. No, you know, no, they, no. They recognize that. Yeah. I think I think the whole COVID thing was a wake up call. It was a great yeah. thing to. You know, if if the Chinese um, were up to psyops, right? There were some outcomes that perhaps they didn't foresee. Uh, I think that, in other ways, they were. You know, if it was psyops, they they knew exactly what they were doing and are actually pursuing their vision um, of sort of displacing the dollar as the as the default currency, the reserve currency in the world, and that's that's also happening. But uh, I guess the good news uh, in terms of blue collar work in the United States is manufacturing is coming home and, it is. and in order for that to happen you need transformers we, we do we do you know the <laughs> right. whole uh, that that whole undercurrent you mentioned it's probably underreported or understated um, at least not recognized so much by the man on the street how much how much reshoring how much how much industry um, and critical manufacturing is coming back to the U.S. But, you know, there was a realization with, you know, COVID, for example, we, we don't produce enough of our own critical pharmaceuticals. Like, um, I'll take a little more coffee. Thank you. All yeah, right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Even basic things like really, yeah. really rudimentary things. <laughs> right. You really you like yeah, penicillin. Like, 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 yeah, we might like, want I that. can't believe we offshored that <laughs> exactly. to our, our like mortal enemies. <laughs> what, what were we thinking? Exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So there's there's that, and then there's you know there's stuff just as crucial to our energy uh, infrastructure. We don't build enough transformers domestically. You know, you can go into any domain and, and kind of see those things, but the impact that it has on American manufacturing and American industry as a whole is just a tremendous opportunity for Americans. You know, as I think of Christ- Christians in business, I think of a tremendous opportunity for, um, for Christians to, to get involved, to, you know, to start businesses, to help build businesses that, um, that are needed for you know, the rebuilding of American infrastructure. Yeah, I think there's a lot to be you know, sort of uh, uh, you know, upbeat about. Particularly related to the prospects of, uh, you know, blue collar America, small town America, Rust Belt America. I, I think yeah. that's really kind of the future. It doesn't have that sexy kind of uh, high flyer feel of Silicon Valley, yeah. you know. And and, yeah. and all of the kids, of course, are attuned to that because of social media and you know, you know, high profile entrepreneurs like Elon Musk and sure. Bill Gates and stuff like that. But in terms of where the future is, the future is in places like Battleground. And Battleground is a blue collar, at least historically. Now, of course, we're getting in a big influx of folks from Portland who are trying to flee Portland and bring Portland with them at the same time. (laughs) No, no. Keep it on that side of the river. It's hard to shake it off. (laughs) It's like drugs. Well, they're all into drugs. (laughs) (laughs) No, but you're right. I mean, there's um, Battleground's a neat community, and there's a lot of communities. There's communities like it across the country, but I love that Battleground. Battleground is a blue-collar town. It's a ch- town of the trades. Um, there is there is 
generational experience here uh, that that just just isn't in other places. And I, I think this is the you know kind of a, a time where that's going to be valued again. Yep. And uh, you know, so it's well, a good time to be here. Well, and, and we've talked about this before. Um, you know, when you think about self-made millionaires, mm-hmm. you know, again, all the kids, you know, who just get their information through a phone. They really think that it's all out of Silicon Valley and high tech, but yeah. the vast majority of self-made millionaires. Oh, here's some food. All right. Oh, that looks good, Max. Yep, this is mine. This oh, is the okay. Chicago chili dog. Right. I think I'm good. Good. Thank you. Yeah, Thank I'll, you. I'll report to, to you to let you know if this is a genuine Chicago chili dog. I've had <laughs> I've had several. Is there ketchup? Okay, no, no, it's, no ketchup, uh, okay. no ketchup. But I don't see the big slice of pickle. Oh, That's okay. one of the things you, you miss here. But anyway, <laughs> so uh, back to this idea of what it, you know. If you if you've read the book, The Millionaire Next Door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, have you ever read that, Max? I have not. Who wrote it? Uh, well, it's a couple of guys. Uh, Stan, Stanley Danko, I think, is one of the guys. They're okay. a couple of sociologists. They're okay. not like your typical, you know, TED Talk, you know, slick, you know, business guys. Uh, so it's full of charts, full of uh, data. But what they discovered is that here are some interesting facts. Well, first of all, 95% of self-made millionaires are men. And uh, huh. the vast majority of them are married with more than three kids. <laughs> Three or more kids. A lot of mouths to feed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and most of them have uh, wives who are stay-at-home moms and uh, or involved in very traditional female occupations. So, in other words, we're not talking about you know the dual-income, no kids, super slick, you know, uh, right. childless people. Uh, and where do they make their money? In stuff like transformers, and stuff mm. like garbage trucks, and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And and so you know, young people out there don't fall for the nonsense. Mike Rowe is telling you the truth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, yeah. The opportunities are in the dull stuff. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. I guess another way to think about this is, you know, like if you, you know, when you think about the battle for like the high tech world, mm-hmm. uh, you've got a few extremely uh, wealthy players, uh, and then a lot of people who are wannabes. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. Whereas yeah. when you talk about where are the opportunities, the opportunities are in the dull, normal stuff. Right. And I know lots of Silicon Valley guys, and they all tell me this, um, that's yeah. the way it actually yeah. works. Right, <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, you've got a real um, a reckoning that maybe we're starting to see with you know, the layoffs you see in the headlines. You know, another, another 6,000 Facebook developers were laid off you know, <laughs> this morning, all that kind of stuff. You know, it's, I'm it's, sorry. This is shot in 20. I, I, I just preached on Sunday about how it was not good to... <laughs> To kind of feel Schadenfreude. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is kind of a you know there's a a, a snap back to, um, to to reality that's affecting some of these markets and some of that um, has just been perpetuated by the by the VC driven economy. Uh, you know when it's so easy to get. Um, hey, I'm sorry. What's what's VC? Yeah, just uh, no. Thanks. Uh, it's the venture capital kind of investment oh, structure right. that has has really been the driver of a lot of the um, a, a lot of the you know a lot of the tech hiring um, and really kind of kind of distorted that labor um, that labor yeah. pool. Um, that's uh, yeah. I think we're starting to see some 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 snap back to that. But as we as we talk about you know the trades and as we like encourage you know. Um, um, the younger generation to you know look towards um, uh, look towards the trades from, from a career planning standpoint. I think um, I think the it, it all aligns. It all aligns. This is where our nation is headed. This is I think where we have great entrepreneurial um, opportunities. You know, if you see see stats. Um, well, if you even talk about um, agriculture, I just saw an article this morning about the average age of um, oh, a farmer, a farmer yeah. in America is right. like 69 years old. Yeah, um, yeah that's right. So, so, it's, uh, prospects, uh, you know, for for getting into a field where you know a lot of the pe- you know people that we've depended on dying yeah. off yeah. means that you know your upside is pretty good. Huge upside, tremendous. Tremendous upside. So yeah, no, that's been. That's, well, what we need is we. This is where Hollywood. Uh, you know, historically, told the story of small town, small sort of uh, dream mm-hmm. people. Mm. You know, and I mean small dream in a not in a pejorative sense, but just in a sense of, a, of an accessible sense. Right. 
So I want to be the garbage truck king of Muncie, Indiana. <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> you know, you, yeah. you know that that is something that used to be, you know, uh, worth uh, a movie about. Right. You know, back in the '40s and the '50s. Today, and you know, all we want is the Wolf of Wall Street. You know, we, we want high finance, we want high tech, you know, mm. we don't want um, that dull, normal yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. This is incredible. I mean, I, I don't know what even begins to cause these things. You think social media and the advent of the information age and the way things are shared like that, but it's true across the board. You're just reminded that, you know, God's pleased to use these ordinary kind of normal small yep. dream type things yep. right. to kind of move things along and that's the bulk of it you know I mean that's across the board whether it's yep. your job or the way a yep. church grows or the way a family grows yep. the way a community is shaped and molded yep. it's through all these like non-sexy yep. 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 small dream things go home start a family mm-hmm. yep. get a good job work mm-hmm. hard yep. and yep. on you go you know yep. well and the small dreams make big people Right. Uh, big dreams where you play a small part make small people. Hmm. So it's a, it's kind of a, a, th- a That's sort interesting. Of, so either you live in a cubicle, right, in somebody else's you know multinational corporation, or you have a large role in a small enterprise, right, you know, or you are a small business owner, you know that kind of thing where you have a lot of. Uh, opportunity to to exercise genuine agency. So, hmm. you know, in a company of 200 people, right? Yeah, one of the fastest companies, growing companies in America, right? Exactly. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> At the same time, I know guys that within a course of a year have seen like two promotions. Yes, exactly. And are now like you know responsible for lots yeah. of things, you know, millions of, of dollars yeah. worth of stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. and and other people and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So. You, you, these people are on the fast track to becoming big people. Exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 There's. There is. That's. That. that yeah. That's a great observation. There's. 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 Um, it's created an opportunity when you really embrace those kind of common faithfulness kind of things. Um, so it's. It's been fun too. Um, fun to see that grow. Um, one thing I'd love to get, get y'all's feedback on is you know this this project is kind of um, positioned as uh, the the battleground project. And one thing that I I face a lot of questions from when I talk to other Christian entrepreneurs is just deciding where to be. And it kind of brings up this whole, um, this whole kind of stay versus, or, or stay versus leave or, right. you know, flee versus build kind of thing. And it's been, it's been, you know, we're here on the West Coast. We're right outside of, um, of Portland, Oregon. We've all known a lot of people who've, um, you know, left for red states or left for, you know, perceived, um, perceived, um, you know, greater Safer pastures. environments, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's really, I've really come to the conclusion that there's great opportunity and great need to, to stay and build in places, right. places like this. Um, and I, uh, I don't think of that in any way of a, you know, going down with the ships kind of, no, <laughs> kind no, of way. No. it's not a defeatist kind of way. No. It's a, it's a, you know, a, a, a really realization of the pragmatic opportunity we have, um, uh, as believers to, to build in, in some of these places. Well, I think, too, you know, a place like Battleground, I, I've, I've, you know, gotten lots of people, at, you know, who asked me about what's it like to live in, you know, the penumbra of Portland, Oregon. And I said, you know, I, my response is, Battleground is the most conservative community I've ever lived in in my entire life. <laughs> right. <laughs> You've lived all over, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Well, I know I've lived in uh, some very liberal places like Cambridge, Massachusetts, and Cape Cod, Massachusetts, <laughs> and, and a fairly tony town in Connecticut. Uh, and I even, before that, lived in western Pennsylvania, which is pretty conservative. But, but Battleground uh, has a very, I think, vibrant Christian community. Mm-hmm. Um, this is... The only place where you can go to like a really upscale um, coffee shop and see people doing Bible studies at the next table, <laughs> right? You know, mm-hmm. you see that all the time here. Not uncommon. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, I'd rather be in a red town in a blue state. Okay. Yeah. Than a blue town in a red state any day. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm I'm literally 25 minutes from the Portland air- airport. Mm. I can fly anywhere in the world. Uh, I can just roll out of bed, be in a plane in an hour. Yeah. You, know? yeah. Uh, yeah. you can't do that in a lot of places. 
uh, and at the same time I can walk down the street. Like the, I just, you know, I just bought a house, as you know. Ken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm surrounded by pickup trucks and uh, American <laughs> flags <laughs> and uh, uh, lawn ornamentation for Easter. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a walkable neighborhood, and I'm within walking distance of two brew pubs and like four coffee shops. <laughs> awesome, love it. That's Perfect. great. Uh, that's great. Anyway, so well, that's a good. So that that kind of micro, more than macro, kind of um, kind of thing that, that makes that makes a a lot of, a lot of sense to me. Um, you mentioned at the at the outset how we've, we're in these different communities, and um, you know, with the the um, facility we're uh, most recently started out in um, Batavia, Ohio. One of the big um, big influences, big factors, was proximity to. To, to good churches. Um, we've got a, a good friend out there, a mutual friend who's... Um, been who's on the show. Been on the show. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, as, uh, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, if, if businesses are kind of economic communities, kind of a microeconomic community, they need those other institutions um, to, to be able to really, really grow and thrive. And so, so that, that being kind of a proximity to a, a good, strong local church community yep. is, is one of the main, main factors that have influenced our decisions. Yeah, our church is uh, embarrassingly well-equipped with entrepreneurs. Yeah. We've got mm-hmm. you, of course, and we have some others. Uh, by the way, in case people didn't know, I'm Camden's pastor. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm on my best behavior here. <laughs> well, and because of that, I know you're a serial entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know you've got some hopes and aspirations to yeah. do some other things in this area. I know, I know you yeah. got a lot of stuff in the works that you can't exactly. really, really talk to us about. But a lot of early stage stuff. But um, but we need we need more businesses. We need more. Our, you know, our, our communities need to be um, served by by multiple Christian um, businesses, and so. I've got some fun stuff in the works, but also try to help other people that, you know, somebody wants to start, start a, start a business. I, I love to have conversations and see, you know, if there's some way I can help or be a part. And, um, he, you know, Rod Dreher in his, in his, um, in his, um, Benedict option. It was either that or live not by lies. Um, All right. But he's talking, I think it was Benedict options. Um, the earlier one really, um, talking about, um, the, the necessity of Christians building their own institutions. Right. And um, that growing and encouraging those, those institution building muscles is, um, is something we, we as conservative Christians have not been particularly good at for the last generation or so. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I, I think that, you know, that's, that's led to maybe... Uh, Maybe in all spheres, you know, we've we've left denominations too quickly. We've abandoned, you know, other institutions, educational institutions. Right. I don't know. You know, you kind of pick your pick your sphere, but um, but we have. Um, I think we need to recover that ability to build right. and reform rather than just abandon and start over. Yeah, I think one of the things that we find challenging as evangelicals, in particular is uh, the, the notion that institutions matter. Yeah. Right. I think, you know, we're, we're all about personal relationships, a personal relationship with Jesus. Why does the church even have anything to do with that? Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of a thing that... It's not a religion, it's a relationship. Yeah, yeah. I hate that. If, if, if I could kill the person, who, <laughs> you'd probably find me in prison. <laughs> but anyway, um, but this idea that institutions don't matter is just nuts. Marriage is an institution, church yep. is an institution. Yeah. Town is an institution. If we're to, basically what we're saying is that we're just going to reduce everything to relationships, we're basically ceding institutions over to everybody else. And now we're experiencing the the, the consequences of that. Yeah. But when it gets to you know uh, building institutions and reforming institutions and saving institutions, I also think that uh, one of the things uh, that we've tended to do is um, look at risk as something that. Um, is avoidable, right? Okay, you know. So another, I, I'm a, I'm of the conviction that there's no such thing as a risk-free life. There's just good risks and dumb risks. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and I think we've made a lot of dumb choices. So let me give you an example of a, a dumb choice. I want a safe, secure job with benefits and never have to think about anything ever again. Mm-hmm. We had a whole generation after the Second World War who bought into that. Mm. I remember the wake-up call for me on why that was a dumb move was when my father-in-law. Who was one of the top engineers at 
at Hamilton Standard, a division of United Technologies, was downsized in the first wave in the early 90s. Everybody knew he was one of the most valuable people in the institution. Ugh. He was downsized and hired back at a lower rate with no benefits. Mm. Brutal. He, mm. he, he bought into the notion that there was such a thing as a risk-free life, and mm. he discovered too late that it, he made a bad risk. He took right. a bad risk. Right. Wow. Wow. I think the whole thing kind of comes back to Camden's question about, you know, um, stay or go, stay and build, um, or, or find, you know, greener pastures, for lack of a better word. Um, you know, people like Camden and people running businesses like that cause other people to want to stay. Yeah, oh yeah. And the notion of institution building hmm. um, not only will cause people to want to stay and build those if it's recovered properly, but then the institutions themselves will be the thing that keeps people here. And so I think it's all kind of related together, you know, talking about Christian localism. Yeah. This focus on your town or your county. Yeah. And, uh, to that end. So yeah, the, the church right. ought to be a blessing to the whole thing, and not just because it's a great big church that sings good songs on Sunday, mm-hmm. but because it's filled with people who want good for the community, yep. who build businesses that treat employees properly, who sell good products at good prices, and you know, on down the list, all these things go. Yep. And so, um, you know, stay or go, I think you're absolutely correct. There's a lot of opportunities to stay in such an area because you have other institutions that the church has ceded to the culture. Right. Yep. kind of crumbling around. Well, I'd like to dive there. into that a little bit because I think if we're going to reform institutions like denominations or colleges that yeah. have historically been uh, faithful but are now drifting, we have to get used to a couple of things. One of those things is being the bad guy mm. and, and firing people. So one of, one of the reasons why uh, the, the Southern Baptist Convention got a second life was because of a guy named Al Mohler and his willingness to fire people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I knew guys who were fired in that first round <laughs> of, of uh, fu- you know, sort of uh, a hatchet, uh, wow. hatchet days, <laughs> and they don't like Al Mohler. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, you know, what we're seeing is sort of the comeback of that particular branch. It, what it did is it went, went into hiding within the SBC, and now it's back. Yeah. And so there are a lot of people who are concerned about whether or not, you know, uh, another Al Mohler will, will be able to... To, to do the dirty work. But let me just name another institution that I know fairly well, uh, Wheaton College. Hmm. Wheaton College uh, today is considered the Ivy League of the evangelical world. It's a top 50 school. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very uh, well-respected school. Uh, majority of its faculty also voted for Obama twice. Hmm. Now, uh, that's, a, that's a, at least a yellow light. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know, and um, so somebody needs to get in there and do the dirty work of cleaning house, mm, right, to save that institution. Otherwise, it's going to be Oberlin in another generation. Right, uh, Oberlin was a, a Christian school at one time. Um, you can go down the, lo- the list. So, in order to stick to you know, stick with a place, you got to be willing to be the bad guy. Right, which is just. You're just the good guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the PCA, a denomination yeah, sure. we're a part of. Exactly, same. Um, same, same thing. Yeah. Um, Somebody needs to be the bad guy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise, the PCA is just the, the PC USA uh, 50 years ago. <laughs> that's literally that, where it, it is. Super, yeah. super interesting because that's kind of exactly what I was thinking of a, across the fence when you talk about moving right. somewhere right. that's a bit more friendly. Right. I mean, I can't take credit for this phrase, but you look at Republicans and Democrats, left and right, there's not fundamentally a difference in worldview there. The, okay. the one group's just willing to drive towards the cliff a lot slower with their seatbelts <laughs> on than, than, yeah. than the other group is. Yeah. And so, like, to that same point, you know, going mm. to somewhere with greener pastures, not to say there's never a case for that, you know. Right. I mean, certainly there could be, and I know lots of people who have done the same, and I respect right. their decision, but... Right, right. But unless there's another plan behind that, an, mm-hmm. an intention to build and also do something wherever you land, with maybe a bit more freedom currently to do it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's ultimately kind of going the same direction. Yeah, there's probably nothing, uh, you know, there is, I, I think there's the tactical place for a strategic retreat, right? I mean, we don't totally. have to fight on every every hill. 
Um, but it's almost, it's kind of interesting because we, like we, we realize, so we look at kind of our own American heritage, the Mayflower, that kind of, you know, fleeing to another place, that good idea. I mean, that's kind of, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thumbs up on the Mayflower. Um, but, um, you know, then when we kind of look at, um, the American migration West, you know, the whole go West, um, young man thing, the American individualism had, had real, real strengths. I, I guess it just seems like we're out here at a time and well, us we're here on at this the West coast. There's no more <laughs> further to, West. Yes, exactly. <laughs> For us at this table, we couldn't, we're, we're in the Pacific if we go further West. So, um, so in a, in a, in that sense, and in, you know, more, to just kind of kind of the, the metaphor, I think it's a time in American history where it's it's time for us to stay and it's time for us to build. It's time for us to reform, and um, and, and those those are things that go against our kind of American individualism, and they kind of go against the last generation of kind of evangelical thought, if you can you can put it that way. There's mm-hmm. um, that's not really been um, been a a high feature of, uh, of what we've seen in the yeah. evangelicalism. Yeah. Well, this has been a fun conversation. I know you got things to do. This uh, has been great. You, you came in, you got like a business to run. <laughs> <laughs> this has been wonderful. I love this. Uh, I love this project. I think, um, I think it's, yeah, it's just, it's a tr- tremendous encouragement to, you know, see believers in different places, you know, investing in their local communities. We're trying to do that here in Battleground and, um, and uh, love to, yeah, just connect with others doing doing the same. Anything you want to say as we wrap up there, Max? I was just going to say we'll have to have you back again and flesh out some more of these ideas. And Love to. and uh, I know where your pastor is, so we can get you here. <laughs> That's, right. That's, right. That's right. Yeah, and there, there are things that are uh, in the incubator that aren't ready to come out yet yeah, that are, are, are exciting. And when we get a little further along on those things, uh, it'll be time to talk about them. Anyway, thanks for listening to the uh, Battleground Project, and uh, we appreciate uh, your your interest in what we're talking about on this show. Please uh, share the show with friends. Um, we're just getting off the ground. We don't have a whole, uh, you know, huge, uh, you know, sort of audience yet. But uh, you can help build that audience. You can say, I was in on the ground floor with the Battleground Project. And, uh, That's the place to be. It's, it is the, <laughs> the place to be. Anyway, uh, we'll talk to you again uh, another time. We do this once a month. We, the, the shows are produced once a month. But we'll be back here at the Old Town Burger, uh, the diner that we uh, we like to, to, to record the show at. So next time, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>